verse 28, uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, but I'm going to talk just for a few moments uh, on this thought, and that is, you've been anointed and appointed, therefore you must break through your disappointment. You've been anointed and you've been appointed, therefore you must break through your disappointment. See, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, it says, and God blessed them. Now, the word blessed, literally, that's where we get the anointing from, the anointing and blessing of the Lord and anointing. Those are interchangeably. And the word here means um, empowered to prosper. Empowered to prosper. So God blessed or anointed them. In other words, he empowered them to prosper and said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. So they were anointed, and now they're being appointed. And watch this, my friend. This is, by the way, is the first, I love this, first command of the Bible before we got to the thou shalt not. No, the first, very first command of the Bible is be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. So watch this. So first there's an anointing, he blessed them, and now there's an appointing, and he said to them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, and watch this, and subdue it. In other words, and, and have dominion. So, so subdue means to bring underneath your foot. So in other words, watch this, my friend, because whenever there's an anointing by God, and everybody, under the sound of my voice, you have been anointed. God has, God has has anointed you, my friend. He's, he's placed an anointing on your life. Why? Because there is an appointing. And so he anoints you so you can walk and walk out the appointing, the assignment. Matter of fact, the scripture says, a man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. And every single person, he's given you a gift. He's given you an ability. He's, he's Matter of fact, my friend, the scripture puts it this way, uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 7, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of power may be of God and not of us. That's what I love about being a kingdom preneur. It's, it's, it's all about him working through me. It's not, see, in the world, it's all about entrepreneurship, and you've got to be sharp, and you've got to be this, and you've got to be that, and you've got to be this. But here as a kingdom preneur, no, you just got to be surrendered to a sharp God. You've got to be surrendered to an all-powerful God. You've got to be surrendered. See, there's no big eyes and little U's. It's just a big God who wants to use you. And so understand you've been anointed and you've been appointed, so now you must break through your disappointed. I'm saying, listen, you've been anointed. God blessed them. He anointed, get this now, empowered to prosper. So before God's going to appoint you to do something, he's already going to put within you or give you the ability by his grace to be able to carry it out. But again, my friend, in the flesh, we can't do it. In the flesh, um, it won't work. In the flesh, there's nothing but failure. See, matter of fact, write this down. When I try, I fail. When I try, I fail. But when I yield to him, he through me prevails. When I try, I fail. But when I yield to him, he through me prevails. So watch this, my friend. So God, instead of trying, watch this now, we got to start trusting. Ooh, can I say that again? Instead of trying, we got to commit to trusting, my friend. Trust, T-R-U-S-T, -T, take refuge under spiritual truth. Again, take refuge under spiritual truth. And here's the truth, my friend. The truth is you've been anointed by God. The truth is you've been appointed by God. You know, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, we love to quote that part, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But watch verse 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. In other words, before you were ever born, God already had some, some, some appointment for you. He already designed something special for you to do. And then he's going to put within you that something to be able to carry it out. Now watch this, my friend. But oftentimes it's, it's, it's like a hidden treasure, and, and it has to be bought out, my friend. And oftentimes 
it's the times of the disappointment that we start discovering. Come on, somebody. Begin. You've been anointed and you've been appointed. See, if you get that down, my friend, somebody said, well, you understand the why, the, the how does it matter because you'll, you'll make a way. See, watch this. Once I make up my mind to do something, God will orchestrate circumstances to align themselves in my favor. When I say I can't, my mind stops trying. But when I ask how can I, my mind keeps searching till it finds a way. There's a way, and I will find it. And if not, by the grace of God, I will invent it. You see, my friend, you've got to understand, you've been anointed by God, and God blessed them, my friend. Listen, when you were in your mother's womb, I like to say you're a masterpiece. Why? Because you're a piece of the master. You're a masterpiece. Why? Because when you were in your mother's womb, God weave and wove your parts, my friend, and he put his hand on you. And, and, and a painting, a masterpiece, my friend, is based on the master that paints it. And when God Almighty, the greatest master of masters, put his hand on you, my friend, in your mother's womb, listen, you've been anointed and you've been appointed. So guess what, my friend? You have got to commit to breaking through the disappointment. Psalm 66, 12 says, Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. That's disappointment. We went through fire. That's disappointment. And through water. That's disappointment. I'm saying, listen, my friend, I mean, have you ever, have you been to the place where you're like, wait a minute, and see, well, this is what Satan wants to do. And remember, one of my main thoughts is this, is you've got to learn, see, unsuccessful people, they doubt their beliefs, and then they start believing their doubts. And Satan's job, watch this, my friend, the accuser of the brethren is to come up to accuse you, to bring up your past, to bring up your mistakes, to bring up your faults, to bring up your failures to bring up your shortcomings, and he uses those to accuse you. And listen, my friend, the Bible calls him the accuser of the brethren. Yeah, you're supposed to be so anointed, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I think God's got an appointment for everybody but you. I'm saying, listen, my friend, and he'll speak to you, and the issue is you've got to stop listening to him, and you've got to understand you have been anointed, and you have been appointed. There's a special job, a special task, that God has for you, there's a special group of people that only you can reach. Like I said the other day, about the, when I was little, my mom had a dog whistle. We had a dog named Sheba, and she would blow the whistle. And I was like, Mom, I can't hear it. And she said, Son, it's not for you, it's for Sheba. The dogs have a different frequency. And, uh, and she can hear it, and she'll be coming soon. And sure enough, here the dog came. I'm saying, but, and that made me understand that in the economy of God, listen, there are people, my friend, that they're tuned in. They can only hear your voice. <laughs> there, there's some good works that are tuned in, waiting for you to do them. I remember hearing the story of, uh, I think it was uh, uh, Thurman who first uh, brought that out, then many others have, have re, 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 uh, replicated the story and retold it in different ways. But Howard Thurman told the story about the richest place in the world, he said, is the grave. And he said, the reason why and I'm, and I'm going to just rework a little bit myself, but he said the reason why is because so many people take there's inventions that they, God gave to them, gave them the ideal, gave them the concept, but they never did anything with it, and they took it to their grave. So he said the, the wealthiest place in the world is the grave where books that have never been written and inventions that were never carried through and great thoughts and things. See, listen, and so the way I put it is this, the grave, it is full of people who've been anointed and been appointed, but they stopped, they gave up because of the disappointment. My friend, you've been anointed by God. That's enough to take you through. You, God blessed them. He, he anointed them to prosper. Listen, my friend, empowered to prosper. And listen, oftentimes our barriers, our barriers make us have to bear down and boil down. See, Barriers often say we're not made to stop you. Barriers are made to stop those who are not sincere and those who are not committed. But to those of us who are sincerely committed, barriers were made to be broken. And barriers, my friend, and oftentimes were made to help us discover strengths that we have that we're not even aware of, my friend. See, you would have never heard of a David if it wasn't for a Goliath. Come on now. And I'm telling you, my friend, you've been anointed. I'm telling you, by the grace of God, you have been appointed. Listen, Jeremiah 1.5, before I formed he said, because he called Jeremiah, Jeremiah said, wait, I'm just a child. You don't understand. And God said, no, you don't understand. 
He said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, Jeremiah 1.5, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. I sanctified, I anointed, I set you apart. Jeremiah, I've got a plan for your life. I anointed you, and then I appointed you to be a prophet unto the nation. So, so stop telling me about your disappointment. Stop telling me about what you think you can't do. I'm telling you, I've anointed you and I've appointed you, so now break through your disappointments. See, again, that was caused men to ride over our heads, disappointments. We went through fire, disappointments, and through water, disappointments, but thou brought us out into a wealthy place. See, my friend, you got to break through. Come on, somebody. You got to break through your disappointments. Why? Somebody's depending on you. Why? Because the world will miss out if you don't break through your disappointments. The Bible says a just man falls seven times the disappointments. The just man falls seven times, but riseth up again. In other words, uh, but the wicked, it says, shall fall into mischief. In other words, the, the, the way you understand a righteous man and woman versus a wicked man and woman is when the righteous man and woman falls, when the righteous man and woman is disappointed. And by the way, oh, there are so many things that will disappoint you. Life will disappoint you. People will disappoint you. You will disappoint you. As a matter of fact, the greatest problem I have is me. <laughs> I mean, I have such high expectations for myself, and, 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 and I'm the one that lifts myself down, my friend. As a matter of fact, one of the hardest lessons I had to learn to do was forgive myself. I had dawned on me, if a, if a, if a perfect God can forgive me, who am I then to hold a grudge against myself? And that negative energy that I was holding against myself was actually the thing that was a, was 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 causing me, my friend, not to walk into the abundance that God has for me. And I'm telling you, throughout life, there's going to be disappointment. I like what my friend Les Brown says: life will knock you down. He said, but if you fall down, he said, fall on your back, because as long as you can look up, you can get up. I like what Dr. Willie Jolly said. I was saying this for years. I, know, I didn't know he said it. I, I mean, I didn't even know he had a, a book on it. As a matter of fact, we were speaking together. He said, oh, you, you must have got that from me. I said, no, sir. I never met you till now. He said, well, I got a book on that. I said, well, I never read your book. <laughs> I said, I guess the same place you got it from is where I got it from. And that is this. He says, a setback is a setup for a comeback. Now, the way I put it is a setback paves the way for comebacks. Come on, somebody. I'm saying, listen, you've been anointed, and you've got to come to grips with that, my friend. The hand of God is upon you, and th there's been many times, there's been many toils and snares, my friend, but God has brought you through. You know why? You have been anointed. God's hand is upon you, my friend. God's hand is, a you've been anointed by God himself, but then you've been appointed, my friend, because, listen, every single person under the sound of my voice, there's an anointing and there's an appointing, and the appointment, the job that he has for you, he anoints you to give you the power to be able to do it, but watch this, my friend, but there's going to be a whole lot of disappointment, and what happens is the way you turn uh, uh, able to tell a righteous from an unrighteous person, the righteous person goes through the disappointments but keeps on going. The wicked person hits the disappointments and throws in the towel. See, when things go wrong, as they sometimes will, and the roads are trudging, seems all uphill. When the funds are low and the debts are high and you want to smile but you have to sigh, if care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't you quit. Life is strange with this twist and turns, as every one of us sometimes learns. Many a struggle turns about, and they might have won, though they stuck it out. Don't give up, though the pace seems slow. You may succeed with another blow. Success is failure turn inside out. The silver tint of the cloud of doubt, you never can tell how close you are. Victory may be near, though it seems afar. So stick to the fight when your heart is hit. It's when things seem worse that you just mustn't quit. My friend, listen, you've been anointed by God. You've been appointed. There's a job that only you can do. Only you can do it the way you can do it, my friend. And listen, so you've got to step into that. Listen, no two people have the same fingerprint. And my friend, and no two people can make the same imprint. In other words, just like God gave us 
individualistic fingerprints. He gave us each a job to do, my friend, and there's nobody that can quite do that thing like you can do that thing. And I'm trying to tell you, my friend, you've been anointed by God to do that thing. What's in your house? What's in your hand? I'm telling you, my friend, you've got something. You've been anointed by God. You've been appointed by God. Now, my friend, it's time to break through the disappointment. Just make a commitment, my friend. Just make a commitment. Every disappointment, you're going to break through. Why? Because somebody, my friend, somebody, if you lay, throw down the towel, somebody, if you lay down and quit, Somebody, if you don't give it all, my friend, somebody is never going to get what they need, my friend. And um, I believe it was some uh, I can't even remember who I was listening to, but they said, you know, at the grave, they said that the, your, the dreams and, 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 and different appointments and jobs and situations that you were appointed to do, uh, they'll be mad at you. And they're like, look, you're dying and you didn't exercise us. You didn't walk, work us out. And now we've got to go to the grave with you. I mean, how selfish can you be? If you want to go to the grave, why are you taking us with you? You should have left us here to touch the world. You should have left us here. You should have given life to us so we could have done what we were designed to do. But you didn't do what you were designed to do. You gave up because of the pressure. You gave up because it was hard. And now you go to your grave and you take us with you. And now some child, now some man, now some woman won't have what they need because you you gave in. I'm saying, my friend, you better understand something. God's name, listen, for the glory of God, for the grace of God, my friend, I'm telling you, you have been anointed. God blessed them. He empowered them to prosper. And he said, be fruitful and multiply. He appointed them. But my friend, there was some times of disappointment, and you've got to commit to breaking through the disappointments. No, it won't be easy. And no, it will be longer sometimes than you expect it. And no, it won't be, my friend, the way you thought. As a matter of fact, in my 58 years of living, listen now, in my 58 years of living, be 59 in November, but my 58 years thus far of living, there's one main thing or two things I'll say that was, they're pretty much the same sentence but just a flip, and that is this, how fickle men and women can be, but how faithful are God. It's at all times. It's amazing how fickle some men and women can be. I mean, they're with you one day and they're gone the next. They're with you. Oh, you can count on me, Doc. Oh, man, I'm telling you, I'm in you. I'm in you with this thing, man. And we we taking this to the top. We we crowning up. We 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 ambassador up. We global up. We're gonna crown up. We're gonna crown. Man, we doing this thing. We doing this thing. And then a month down the road, you can't find them. And uh, I'm telling you, my friend. I'm telling you, you've been anointed. You've been appointed. Now, you just got to break through the disappointment. I wish, I wish the disappointment wasn't there. But listen, without the disappointment, you won't develop some muscles. David said, I killed a lion. I killed a bear. You know what? That was training him to kill the giant, my friend. And I'm telling you, your disappointments, your disappointments aren't made to make you quit. Your disappointments were made to help you to develop your stronger muscles. You see, when a guy or gal lifts weights, my friend, you, you, you lift the weights and it's tearing down the muscles. But guess what? The muscle now build comes back, and now you're going to be able to lift a little more. And then you tear it again, and it builds back. And you're able to lift a little more. And then you lift hard and tear again. And sometimes, my friend, what God's doing is it seems like God has to break down and tear our hearts, my friend, and tear down our self-reliance and tear down our reliance on other people and tear down, my friend, break it, crush it to shreds. <laughs> and it's not easy and it hurts and it's like, oh, my goodness, do I have to go through this? It's like that caterpillar in the cocoon. It's seemingly impossible to get out of place, that dark place, that lonely place. God, what are you doing? First, I was stuck on the ground and could barely move and moving all slow. And now, now I'm in this cocoon. I can't, I'm just wiggling around. I, can't, I was slow enough as it is. Like God says, don't worry, I got a plan. When I'm done, my friend, you'll never have to be on the ground again unless you want to. When I'm done, <laughs> you'll be able to soar through the sky freely. When I'm done, but the caterpillar is like, it hurts, though. It's dark here. It's lonely in here. I, I don't know if I can take it. God says, no, you can take it. You can take it. You just keep on going. Just one day at a time, just one day at a time, and after a while, that caterpillar, my friend, metamorphosizes, and it emerges now as a beautiful butterfly. Oh, I'm telling you, my friend, see, it was anointed and appointed to fly, but oh, it had to go through the disappointment, 
Oh, it had to go through crawling on the ground all slow and maybe being ugly for a while. But my friend, it broke through. And grapes must be crushed to make juice. Diamonds form under pressure and enduring the test of time. Olives are pressed to release oil that blesses. Seeds grow in the darkness only under they've been put down and planted uh, under the dirt, my friend. So whenever you feel crushed under pressure or pressed or in the darkness, you're in a powerful place of transformation. You're in a powerful place, my friend, where although it seems to be a place of disappointing, I mean, listen, unless a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. That seems like a disappointment. I'm like, wait a minute, I thought I was going up. Like Joseph, I had a dream, and, and, and all my brothers was going to be, and my, even my mom and dad was going to bow down to me. Lord, what, what, what happened? I'm being thrown into a pit. I'm being sold as a slave by my own brothers. I'm saying whenever there's an anointing and there's an appointing, my friend, there's going to be a disappointing, but you can break through the disappointing. And I'm telling you, my friend, at the end of his life, uh, jo- Joseph, uh, near the end of his life, brother, he says to his brothers, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Why? To save much people alive. I'm telling you the hard times you're going through now are the hard times you're about to go through. I'm telling you, you either went through a hard time, gone through a hard time, or about to go through a hard time, but it's not just for you, my friend. I, I love the story of Tawanda Williams. And we've had her on this call many times. And, and Tawanda was born without arms. And her husband, Toby, said, baby, this, this, this is not just for our family. This, this is for the world. God wants to use you to show the world to get rid of their excuses. And she wrote a book called Unarmed but Dangerous, <laughs> right? Born Without Arms. And now uh, the movie Eagle Without Wings uh, uh, is going to be a story of her life. But I'm telling you, my friend, it's so powerful. I'm telling you, every major person, that you can think of has been through some of the darkest, disappointing times imaginable. But guess what, my friend? They kept one or two main things in mind. Number one, they kept in mind, I've been anointed by God. They kept in mind, I've been appointed to do a certain job. And if I don't do this thing, it won't get quite done quite the way I can do it. And so I'm telling you, my friend, you've been anointed and you've been appointed. So you've got to break through your disappointment, my friend. Break through. No, it won't be easy, but it'd be worth it. You got to break through. You got to maintain and sustain. You got to stay in there. You got to keep on kicking. You got to keep on throwing blows. You know, like what Mike Tyson said, he said, everybody's got a plan when it comes to boxing until they get punched in the face. <laughs> he, he, said, he said, everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. You know, and everybody's got the desire, and everybody's like, oh, I'm going to, oh, yeah, I'm going to reach ambassador, and oh, yeah, man, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to reach then global ambassador, then I'm going to reach crown, I'm going to, and and guess what, my friend, everybody's got a plan, right? Everybody's got a plan like that until it doesn't go the way you expect it, until there's a monkey wrench that's been thrown in the plans, and mark it down, the monkey wrench will be thrown in your plans. But we got a God, my friend, listen, that through it all, my friend, he works and he can weave and he can do. Th- and I'm saying, listen, everything that comes against you, my friend, the Bible says we're more than conquerors. Uh, I was talking to earlier today, Roberta sent me a text, and and um, and I don't know, I must have said something to her in a text. I, I called her champ, and she's like, I've never been called that before. She's like, wow. I said, but you are a champion. God, that's all God has is champions, and champions are people that overcome things. Champions are people. See, a champion. Can you imagine, by the way, can, can you imagine a guy on the football field? Can you imagine they hike the ball, they throw the ball, they, they, they give the ball to the guy, and can you imagine the opposing team just moves off to the side, goes off to the sideline, and lets the guy run down to the end, in the end zone? Is, they, is that a touchdown? Uh, kind of, sort of, but no. But no. <laughs> You say, wait a minute, what do you mean? But, it, I mean, it kind of is, but it's not. Why? Because there's no opposition. So the game of football is all about the, 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 the offense that has the ball and the defense is trying to defend and the offense has to break through the, the defense, has to, has to break around. Has to, but I'm saying, my friend, but if the defense just sits down, just moves off to the side and, it's like it doesn't really count. You didn't go through anything. You didn't 
and, and so that Booker T. Washington said it best. I'm going to get ready to close. Booker T. Washington said success is not determined by what a person accomplishes as much as it's determined by what they had to overcome to accomplish. So I'm going to say it and say it and say it until you believe it, until you get it. And that is you have been anointed. You have been appointed. So you've got to break through your disappointment. I mean, you got to you got to you got to come to grips. You got to understand that life <laughs> people circumstances situations I mean, it's full of disappointments. Job said, man is born under trouble. <laughs> but, watch this, my friend, but the people that learn to break through because they stay focused on the fact I've been anointed by God, therefore, I have the power. He has given it to me. I don't always feel like it, but the more he breaks me down, the more I rely on him, then the more they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. By the way, why would you need to renew your strength unless it was all gone, right? And so they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And so, my friend, I'm telling you, when it comes to life, when it comes to business, and in this business, my friend, it's a great business model. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. You've been anointed and you've been appointed. But I'm going to tell you, there's going to be a bunch of disappointments. And your success is going to be determined by how well you handle the disappointments. It was Rocky who said to his son, I don't care how hard you can hit. He said, here's what I care about, how hard you can get hit and get back up. Wow. <laughs> wow. He said, it doesn't matter how hard you can hit. He said, what really matters, because see, every true champion is going to be tested. Every true tra champion is going to be blindsided, hit. Every true champion is going to go through the valley. But as you go through the valley, you're on your way up to the mountaintop. And so he said, I don't care how hard you can hit. I care about how hard you can get hit and get back up and get back in there. So somebody put it best this way. Don't allow success to go to your head. But more importantly, don't let failure or seeming failure go to your heart. Mm, that's good right there. I'm going to let that soak in. See, you had some failure. But don't let your failures have you. Brush yourself off. Get back up and get back in there. You know why? Because you've been anointed. <laughs> you know why? You've been appointed. And, my friend, the world won't be quite the same. I mean, what if Steve Jobs would have just given in? And, by the way, there's one reason Steve Jobs said, you, you better learn to love what you do because you'll have to go through so many barriers and so many blockades you have to break through so many, that if you don't really love what you do, you'll never make it. <laughs> you'll never make it. What's going to keep you keeping in there when it's like, I've taken my last breath, my last step, I can't. And that's where the breakthrough comes in. That's when the second win, that's when the, <laughs> there's a whole new arena. So, my friend, Unsuccessful people doubt their beliefs, and they start believing their doubts. Successful people doubt their doubts and then believe their beliefs. And I want you to believe something. You've been anointed by God. <laughs> I want you to believe something. You've been appointed by God. I want you to believe something. You can break through every disappointment. I didn't say it would be easy. I didn't say you wouldn't have to break through with tears in your eyes sometimes. I didn't say you'd have to break through with maybe limping. But you can bank on you've been anointed. You can bank on you've been appointed. And you can 
bank on by the grace of God, you can break through the disappointment. Because now unto him that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Do you believe that, my friend, is the difference?